Okay, so uh, hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Kamil Mijuka, and uh, I will uh, present a uh, few things uh, related to the project in which I'm hired, and it's related to the researchers uh, in the Białowieża forest. Probably most of you heard about the Białowieża forest because it's considered to be as the last primeval. Uh, forest complex in the lowland Europe and recently uh, it's become even more popular because of the brilliant idea of uh, current Polish government who uh, in the area of other brilliant ideas develop a new way of protecting the, this area namely by cutting it. Uh, however the fact is that this area have a, a long tradition of, of protection because uh, from the medieval times, it was an area where uh, Polish kings were organizing uh, hunting, and uh, because of that, it was forbidden to the, all of the rest people to, to to make any kind of activity which would be not related with with, with those huntings. And uh, this project is funded by the Polish National Center of Science. And uh, we uh, are investigating all of the area of the Białowieża forest because it's divided into a few parts. And uh, here you can see the area of interest. It's, the forest is located in the uh, eastern border of, of, of Poland and it's uh, divided between the Polish and the uh, Belarusian side. And uh, here you can see the... the, the this is the whole area of the Białowieża forest, and uh, this area is uh, a zone of uh, strict protection. And uh, even though that uh, we are conducting some res researches inside of the area of uh, strict protection, but uh, if we talk about excavation, it's a bit problematic because uh, there is a lot of rules that we need to accept. However, all of the rest area is, let's say, more uh, open for us. And, uh, well, uh, the main aim of uh, this, this project is a creation of a catalogue of all archaeological sites known. And the thing is that this is uh, an inter interdisciplinary project. It's not only archaeological, but uh, uh, we have two paths. Uh, one is, the let's say, the cultural and the archaeology, and the second is the uh, Palo environmental studies, linked main mainly with uh, biology, but also with the geographic. Uh, sciences and uh, well uh, there are two uh, specific case studies also uh, linked with uh, two PhDs which are uh, mm, which are let's say now created by uh, two students one is to uh, about the mounds which are uh, a lot of them recorded I will show you further and the second is uh, the uh, agrar fields remains and all of this is linked also with the uh, leader LS data and, uh, well, uh, what are our methods? Uh, first is the archive query, uh, just to find all of the known already traces of the human activity. And we have this uh, Polish archaeological record, uh, AZP, which, uh, uh, well, we are proud of it because it covers also all area of Poland and you can find uh, all known archaeological sites inside, but the, the, the thing is that it's in the analog form, so we need to make a digitalization of, of this archive. And uh, the second step is the analyze of the uh, LAS data. Uh, we just mark all of the uh, possible archaeological sites, and uh, later, and um, let's say this is the most important part from the point of view of, of this session, uh, we just go uh, on a field and make a, a field walk, a surface survey, but it's having in mind the conditions of a dense forest, dense vegetation, it look a bit different than, uh, let's say, a regular surface survey. We just, it's impossible to track any, let's say, pottery uh, or flints on the surface uh, because everything is covered by the vegetation. So we are uh, counting only on our GPS with uploaded location of, of sites track uh, during the LS data analysis and sometimes because of the activity of uh, various creatures uh, mammals uh, which live 
just beneath the the, uh, the level of ground and which are going up and moving some soil uh, it's only in these cases it's possible to to track some material uh, and of course we are planning to we are making some uh, geophysics and some limited uh, drilling and uh, test trances because okay this is a kind of we are basing mainly on the remote sensing but still the only way to to figure out the, the chronology of the size is uh, a regular uh, smaller or bigger excavations in order to to gain some material and uh, and the rest is the Palo environmental studies uh, with a wide, wide range usually we start them uh, when we are on the field and when we are excavating because it's much easier to to, to gain some material for that. Uh, well, and uh, we are quite lucky in Poland that uh, uh, almost all of the surface, is, all, all the area is covered by the ISOC project, uh, which is uh, the, let's say, uh, open access ILS data. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the half of the uh, our area of interest is, uh, unfortunately, there is no ILS data available. And actually, there is a big project for biosensing made by the Institute of the Forest Researchery, and they've made this ILS data very good quality, but they just don't want to share with us because, uh, well, of some, let's say, political means, instead of that, they just hire their own archaeologists in order to prove the uh, the fact that they could just cut the Beauvera forest. But it's just the thing that the politics is just mixing into the archaeological studies and it's, it's a very bad thing. Uh, so, uh, you can see here uh, all of the sites that we have tracked uh, during the analysis of the uh, LS data, and it's uh, quite a lot of them. And, uh, well, uh, mainly these are mounds, but uh, we also figure out quite a lot of uh, agrar fields complex and uh, points of exploitation which is uh, linked with the then with the past uh, human uh, economy uh, and some and many other uh, and uh, okay I will just skip it because it's about the let's say that the pool analysis which showed that uh, even though that this area was uh, let's say strictly protected there was some human activity uh, and let's say the clue the main part uh, problems in the field link it with uh, let's say so-called mobile GIS uh, well uh, the, the GPS accuracy, of course, at the first place, because, uh, because of the dense vegetation, the signal is sometimes very weak. Uh, and there is uh, no GSM signal, so it's impossible to use, uh, let's say, the devices in the kind of tablets or mobiles with uploaded uh, mobile GIS software. Uh, because of that, we are only using uh, handheld GS GPS devices. Uh, with the accuracy, uh, it's a Garmin equipment, with uh, accuracy up to 5 meters, uh, which is totally uh, enough for us because, well, our main rules is just to be in the uh, range of the site of, of, of the monument, but, okay, usually we are just standing in the middle of the barrow or the uh, tar house and just making the measurements. And uh, from our point of view, it's, it's, it's much more convenient. And, uh, this is uh, how does it looks all the process uh, after the teledetection in the GIS software. Currently we are using uh, Kugis, but probably the main da database will be created in uh, ArcGIS, ArcGIS Arc software. And uh, later we are creating the uh, maps which are uploaded in the KMZ format into the or mobile device, GPS devices and later we are just making the field verification and we are trying to use a tablet with uh, Excel workflows uh, so there is not any connection between this the, let's say straight digital connection between this uh, GPS and, and the tablets we are just uh, we can sometimes we are using also just a paper and this is because it's more convenient for us 
and uh, later uh, we are uploading all of the results of the marks that we made during our surface survey into into our Kugis software and making all of the uh, post processing. And well, I can tell you that uh, about 90% of the uh, locations uh, marked in the ILS data was uh, verified uh, positively. Uh, well, this is uh, here. You can see our uh, well, tracks, which looks a bit odd because we just usually forget to uh, switch on the tracking, and when we are just transferring on the field uh, and we are just switching on the devices, it appears on straight lines. Uh, I'm just going to show you a few examples of the main objects that uh, we were uh, detected, and uh, charcoal pies are very uh, interesting because. Uh, uh, they look like uh, regular barrows, like burial barrows, and it's problems. Usually, it's a problem how to to divide them with with the uh, from the the mounts. Let's say the economic object like it are are they similar to the one uh, let's say made for uh, buried the people? And of course, whole Europe was covered by the things like that. But the Belvedere Forest, because of the long history of protection. Uh, give a great uh, possibility to, to track those uh, objects in the field. Of, of course, at the first moment they were tracking the ILS data, but later we just found them uh, without uh, only with the use of GPS in the field, and usually they are visible and quite well preserved. Uh, so here we can see on the visualization. Uh, another thing, a tar house. Uh, which was uh, created in order to, to, to produce a tar. Uh, also very well preserved, quite big structures, so it's, it's very easy to find them, it's, it's very difficult to, to just miss them on the field. And uh, well, according to the size, also the GPS accuracy is not a, not a problem in these in this examples. And this is very interesting thing, because uh, these are the agrar fields, let's say it's a, our Polish uh, kind of uh, Celtic fields, and they were, let's say, uh, discovered uh, thanks to ILS data analysis. Because before introduction of of, of uh, leader data, uh, we didn't knew about the existence of things like that, um, because they are invisible uh, in the, uh, in, the on the in the field. So uh, thanks to them, we're just. Uh, using the GPS to find the, the location taken from the leader data, and when we're just standing in the in the in the middle of the nowhere in the forest, we're just okay. Here we are. Here we have the agrar fields. We are just making mark, and let's say treated this as a positive verification. Uh, during this summer season, we are planning to make some uh, test excavations, and we hope that uh, we'll able to to find some interesting material as well, or also for. Uh, Palo environmental studies. So in this case, GPS was extremely useful, and uh, we found two hill forts. This is the the the, the, the most interesting one uh, located at the river of Orwuska. But the problem is that it's located in this area of strict uh, protection. So uh, excavation in that area are, as I told you before, uh, very difficult uh, because, for example, we cannot use uh, uh, cars there. And uh, we also should avoid cutting wood, uh, roots as much as possible, which is very difficult in, in this kind of conditions. And uh, well, and also we have also some more modern things like uh, trenches, which are quite well preserved trenches from the first and the second war. Uh, this wasn't area of let's say some tight fights, but still uh, we can detect things like that. And of course settlements and uh, places of sound exploitation from uh, various periods, unfortunately impossible to, to, uh, to set the chronology of, of the things like that. And uh, the most interesting things are the whole landscape complex that we, were, we track already with uh, various uh, features located. Here you can uh, different uh, visualization. And uh, you can, we can find, uh, it's interesting because all things are combined like hill forts, settlements, agrar fields, and uh, uh, a barrows linked probably with a burials. And this is another complex, one of the most interesting. Uh, we track there a lot of, as you can see even now. And this is the local dominance. 
and all of them. Some of them were known before, uh, before we start our uh, project and before we, we start to work on the ALS data. Uh, however, thanks to the ALS and later thanks to the usage of the GPS in the field, we are able to track much more of them. Okay. And the conclusions, well, um, so uh, having in mind that this session was devoted to the mobile GIS, unfortunately uh, we didn't use it as in the, under, in the strict understanding as a software uploaded to the mobiles or tablets. We just choose the, let's say, more uh, convenient way for us, which is maybe not so developed. However, uh, taking consideration, you know, making some notes in the mobile GIS software in the field with a very uh, weak signal would be very difficult and would generate much more time to do this. So we just uh, combine good quality mobile GIS with a tablet notes or even the analog sheet, paper sheet forms. And later we just uh, use it, uh, we just made the post processing and uh, According to our experience, uh, this is just the best way to make uh, this kind of uh, research survey in this kind of, uh, well, let's say, very uh, difficult uh, conditions. And we think that this guarantees the best, let's say, uh, balance between the, 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 the quality and the cost, which is, as usual, very important. So, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.